In this week's lab, we're going to be using, for the first time, a micro Bunsen burner. Um, so I'm going to show you in this video how to light the burner and use it safely. Um, when you look under the sinks in, your, in the lab, at your lab station, you'll find two different types of burners. One of the types has this H-shaped base, and it's much larger. This is the Bunsen burner that we use in grades 10, 11, and 12. So in grade 9 science, we don't use these ones. We'll just put that aside. We're going to use what's called a micro burner. Um, it's got the small round base on almost all of them. When you look at the burner, you're going to notice that the base has beside it this little nozzle. This nozzle, if you turn it one way, it'll eventually turn all the way in. You can't turn it anymore. That prevents the gas from coming through here. So this nozzle controls the gas. Having said that, we don't usually use it to control the gas. When you first get your burner, you want to open that nozzle so you turn it. Now if you turn it enough, the nozzle comes all the way out. Now you don't want to do that, but let me just show you something here. On that nozzle, there's a little rubber band. That little rubber band, or O-ring, is designed to prevent gas from coming out of that, that end of the burner. So when you open your, that nozzle, when you open this to let the gas come out, you want to open it until you just start to see that rubber ring, and then maybe turn it just a little bit back the other way. You can still see it a little bit, but that rubber ring should not be all the way out, or the gas can come out there. If the gas did come out there, it wouldn't be any major problem. There'd be a small flame here, possibly, in which case you would just turn the gas off using its main nozzle over here and then you could close it. Now on the neck of the burner, on this barrel, you have this uh, little sleeve. This sleeve can turn on most of them. Some of the older burners, this is a bit rusted and doesn't turn. Or maybe on one or two burners, this is actually missing. But the purpose of, that, uh, of this little sleeve is you can open it, and now air valves on the barrel are open, and air can come in, oxygen can come in, and that theoretically that would give you a hotter flame. You can close it, and now there's less oxygen getting into the gas, and the flame would be a little bit cooler. On these micro burners, there's very little difference, so usually I recommend keeping that open at the start. Now there's a rubber hose on, attached to the micro burner. It should be firmly attached at one end and you don't normally have to adjust that. The other end sometimes has a small crack on it. If it's got a little crack, that's fine. If it has a large crack, we'll just grab some scissors and we'll cut that off. The other end of the hose goes on the gas nozzle. Now you don't have to force it on. You just push it on and give it a bit of a twist and that's good. As long as it doesn't come off as you pull, that's fine. Now keep in mind there are two gas nozzles here on the bench. Pay attention to what you're doing. It's not common, but you might, not paying attention, you might attach the burner to one nozzle and then accidentally turn on the other gas valve. That could lead to a bit of a major problem for you. So be paying attention when you go to light your burner. So now I've got the burner ready to, ready to go. I've got some matches. In some labs they use strikers. We're going to use just matches. Some of you may never have lit a match before. So you tear one of the matches off. You take the package and you fold it backwards like this. Now on the back of the match package there's this rough strip, this brown strip. I'm going to put the head of the match on that brown strip and I'm going to pinch with my thumb and forefinger like this uh, between the, on the match head and I'm pinching pretty firmly and then I'm going to pull the match out, and as I pull, it's going to rub along that rough edge, and so the friction will make the match ignite. Sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. So let's pull it out. Whoops, there's once, didn't work. One more time, there, it didn't work again. And one more time, there we go. Took me three tries. Now when you hold the match, don't point it down, because the flame rises, and it'll rise towards your finger. Point it up away from your hand, okay? Now that I've got my match lit, I'm going to open the gas over here on the end. When the gas handle is parallel to the, to the nozzle like that, it is open. And now gas is coming out. So let me just show you one more time. I've got the nozzle gas turned off. I take my match. I'm going to put it on that brown strip, pinch with my thumb and forefinger, pull it out. If it doesn't work, 
Do it a couple times. There we go. Hold the match up. You will not burn yourself. And now open the gas valve and bring the match burning towards the mouth of the burner. Just like that. Don't bring it from above. Bring it from the side. Hold it there and you're done. Okay? So one more time. Turn the gas off. Take your match. Light your match. Point it up away from your hand. Bring it near the burner. Turn the gas on. Bring the match from the side to the mouth and you're good. There you've lit your burner. Now when you look at the flame, you may be able to see that this flame has some structure. It's an intense flame. The top of the flame up here is actually cooler than the point down here. You may notice there's an inner blue cone of flame. The hottest part of the burner flame is at the tip of the inner blue portion. So about midway in the flame is its hottest part. Not way down here at the mouth and not way up here at the top, but in the middle, okay, at the tip of that inner blue cone. Now I mentioned this sleeve on the barrel of the burner. The burner doesn't get hot, so you can touch the base of the burner. You're not going to burn yourself. You can adjust this nozzle here. You're not going to burn yourself. You can touch the sleeve. It's not hot. You can even touch a little bit above the sleeve. It's not hot. But you wouldn't want to touch way up here and right near the flame. That will get hot. The hose doesn't get hot. So don't be afraid to handle the burner once it's lit. Okay. Now, in this experiment, we're going to be doing, you're going to need to heat a test tube today. The test tube you'll be heating will have a little cover on top, but I'm going to show you how to heat a test tube. I've got a pair of test tube tongs with me here. These tongs, when you squeeze them, they open, and when you let go, they tighten again. So you squeeze the tongs, put it on your test tube, and it sh they should stay like that. Okay? Take your test tube and about a 45 degree angle pointing away from you and pointing away from your neighbor. You're going to put the, the, the test tube in the burner flame at a 45 degree angle and move it back and forth like that over the hottest part of the flame. Keep the test tube pointing away from you and keep it pointing away from any other people. Don't heat the test tube vertically because the bottom of the test tube might break. Just heat it at a 45 degree angle, gently like this, and you're going to be good. Okay, so the test tube tongs do not get hot. The test tube itself, even way up here at the top, will not be hot. But at the bottom where you had it in the flame, that part of the test tube is going to be quite hot, so you wouldn't want to touch that. All right, so there we have it. Lighting a Bunsen burner, using it to heat a test tube. Let me just put that in a test tube rack here. Now, when you're finished with the burner, don't just blow it out. When you're finished with the burner, use the nozzle like this, turn the handle until it's per perpendicular with the nozzle and the gas goes off. All right, so there you have it, lighting a burner, the parts of a burner, and using it to heat a test tube.